in Reno tonight, the last game of the Mountain West regular season. Matt Bradley and San Diego State have won eight of their last nine. And it's senior night tonight. Grant Sherfield and Nevada looking for an upset. Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Chilly night in Reno tonight and a senior night inside the Lawler Event Center. San Diego State and Nevada final game, regular season Mountain West. With the Colorado State win over Boise State, everything is set for next week in Las Vegas. Colorado State will be the two seed, San Diego State the three seed. Hi everybody, I'm Rich Waltz along with former Baylor standout King McClure. San Diego State's won eight of their last nine. They've got momentum. They'd like to ride that into Las Vegas and also take that into the NCAA tournament. Rich, the way San Diego State plays defense, I would not want to see them in a tournament. All right, you are known as a defensive standout when you played at Baylor. So tell me, no one's been able to slow these two guys down. We have two of the best scorers in the Mountain West tonight, Matt Bradley and Grant Sherfield. Matt Bradley is on an absolute Tear, averaging 28 points per game in his last two. He is a dynamic scorer, and he's highlight packages. You see him shoot only threes, but do not get it twisted. He is a scorer, great handle on him, big body, can finish. And on the other side, Grant Sherfield, this guy right here, I love the pace that he plays at. He's a great point guard, the absolute definition of a three-level scorer. But his passing is elite, can pass with the best of them, top five in the country. Grant Sherfield is an absolute show to watch. Reno tonight, ready to go. San Diego State screaming towards the tournaments. And Nevada on a senior night looking for an upset. Senior night ceremonies wrapping up. Lawler Event Center, good crowd expected. The Nevada Wolfpack and San Diego State Aztecs. Brian Dutcher in his fifth year. What an incredible ride it's been, of course, by the side of Steve Fisher as they built this program together. Dutcher has taken it to great heights as well. They've won eight of the last nine and three straight. Lineups here. Now we talked about guards. Kay McClure and the lineups are brought to you by Kubota. Talk about the bigs, Nathan Mensa and Will Baker. That's a good matchup. And Warren Washington down low as well. That's a great matchup. Nathan Mensa, I love the way he defends. Can guard in the paint, can protect the rim, but can also step on the perimeter. Guard guards too. Yeah? All right. There's Steve Alford. It's been a tough year for Nevada. They really haven't been healthy all at the same time. It seems like they are. They've had a lot of close losses of late. They could be a dangerous team in the tournament. They have enough firepower. We told you about Sherfield. Desmond Cambridge will get them 16 a night. Warren Washington will Baker also double digit scores. Series history dominated by San Diego State of late. And our keys to the game are brought to you by Daisy Cottage Cheese. Mr. McClure. For San Diego State, they must find a second score. Too many times they rely solely on Matt Bradley and they don't have a second and third score to help. But Nevada, take care of the ball. The San Diego State team causes a lot of havoc, will press you, will get up in your grill and make it hard for you. You must take care of the ball if you want to win. Now they've met before and it was a thriller. It went down to the end. In early February, San Diego State 65 to 63. What's the tempo of this game going to feel like? Well, San Diego State, they normally aren't the fastest team. They have to get into their sets, run stuff. For Nevada, I'm, Nevada, I'm pushing the ball, pushing the tempo, because in the half court, San Diego State can really get into you and make it tough. Nathan Mintz, a first touch in the post, banging against Warren Washington. Backing in, spinning, the hook is off. Nevada's got some really good rebounding guards, Cambridge and Sherfield do an excellent job of that. And this is Sherfield, averaging 18 a game, but struggling his last two. Just 11 points per game, and has been cold from three. 
Washington misses his first hook. It's interesting. With two great guards on the court, matter of fact, more than two great guards, the first thing both teams do, establish the post game. Try to get their bigs the ball and see what they can get out down low. Chad Johnson, this is Pulliam, takes the three and misses it. Long rebound picked up by Trey Coleman, the sophomore, who's in the starting lineup tonight for Nevada. Coleman, Blackshear, Sherfield, Cambridge, and Washington. The starting five for the Wolfpack. Blackshear does a little bit of everything. He takes Bradley down into the paint and misses that shot. And see the numbers, San Diego State's defense, the best in the land. Adjusted defensive efficiency in Ken Palm. They are number one in the country. Mensa again tries the middle. This time it's down. I like it, going to the left. Two bounces against Warren, Warren Washington, who is a great interior defender, good rim protector. I like it, go right out. Sherfield, clear for a jumper and he hits it. What have you seen on tape? Why has Sherfield struggled the last two games? Teams just put an extra emphasis on him. I mean, they know what he brings to the table. They know how good this kid is. So you make it hard for him in a pick and roll. Try to get it out of his hands, force him to his weak spot. Try to get him more inside, more so. He can pass the ball so well and he can score so well. You have to choose. It's right here. Nathan Minton taking his time. Good left-handed hook. Washington with the foul. It will be a baseline out of bounds. We're just underway. Two apiece. San Diego State's played a bunch of games in the last two weeks. In fact, 48 hours ago, they played two overtimes and outlasted Fresno State on their home court, 65 to 64. That was not a thing of beauty. Of course, Nevada on Tuesday lost at Boise State in a good game. They lost by six. Butler on the way, and it's long. Coleman. Blackshear gets a screen. Nevada shoots 33% from distance. They've had nights where they've shot it well, they've had nights where they've not. That's impressive right there. That's why Mensa is so valuable to this team. He can stay on the perimeter, he can stay in front of guards on the perimeter. And you saw right there the block on Blackshear. His defensive presence is so valuable. Blackshear pushes Tempo. Blackshear in the lane. And he's bumped. Let's see if he's shooting or not. Yes, he'll get two free throws. Mensa right here, staying in front. That was great help side by Brad, by Bradley. But look at this block right here. The length, the athleticism. Mensa is the anchor down low for the San Diego State defense. He's also probably the defensive player of the year in the conference. That's very fair. When you look at it, they're the best defensive team. And why are they the best defensive team? <laughs> really because of Mensa. I got a rib protector with him and great on ball defenders. Blackshear, Steve Alford says, is a glue guy and really good right now, and he has the chance to become great. Just a, uh, a youngster, Blackshear. Free throw on the way, good. He's averaging 13 in his last two, and what I've been surprised about is he's shooting 50% from the three in his last two games. Not really known as a three-point shooter, no, more normally known as a driver. That's impressive. The way he's shooting the rock. Right now it's Coleman who's chasing Bradley around. We'll probably see Blackshear on him as well as the night goes on. Mensa and Washington again. Force that shot. Sherfield down for the rebound. Yeah, that's not the shot you want. Right there, rush shot. Not the shot that coach is gonna like. Sherfield creating. But coach Alford will like that shot right there. Get into the cup. Easy floater. Timeout San Diego State. Brian Dutcher not happy right now. And he's letting his team know it. This guy, just a flat out score. Grant Sherfield in Nevada, a 6 2 start. Really? Reno Skyline and the home team is up 6 2 right now, early on. But a quick timeout by Brian Dutcher. Didn't like what he saw. He likes this, though, the tournament resume. 
for San Diego State. They have not lost a game outside of quad one. This would qualify as a loss outside of quad one. But the record is good. Jerry Palm has them right now as a nine seed. And you like them in the tournament to pull off some uh, some surprises or maybe really gives people some issues in this first two rounds. Yeah, especially if they're a nine seed. As a nine seed, you don't want to see a team you never see a nine seed with the number one defense in the country. So you run across a nine seed, you're playing the eight seed in the second game, you're potentially playing the number one seed because we were a nine seed at Baylor my senior year. And we had to run against Gonzaga in the second round. I'm sure a lot of one seeds would not want to see the best defense in the country in the second round of the tournament. Let's see if San Diego State can get the ball in Matt Bradley's hands in a spot where he can score. They're making it tough on him. The nine at face front. When he catches, he shoots 42 from the three. Good pull up right there. Normally you see him shoot a photo right there. A good pull up. Matt Bradley shoots 42 from the three. Take away the three and bring extra help. Pulliam has the sweetest floater in the league. That is his best shot. Sherfield, Cambridge off a screen. Missed it. Washington flying high. Gets the rebound. Keeps the possession. Screen for Sherfield. And a foul on Reach. Pulliam trying to defend him. I love when Jacob Pulliam comes off. Normally we see him shoot a floater because that man will shoot a photo from the free throw line. But good pull up right there. They need him to be a second scorer if they want to see success in the conference tournament and in March. Last two games, 14 at Wyoming, nine against Fresno. And it seems like when Pulliam scores, they are big points. And that's an offensive foul on baseline out of bounds on Nevada. Desmond Cambridge Jr. with his first personal, second team foul. San Diego State has gone to their bench. Josh Tamayic is in. Tahiro Diabate is in. And Adam Seiko is in. They are a very deep team. Maybe the deepest team in the Mountain West Conference. That's what causes success when you get into the NCAA tournament. And that's why Coach Dutcher thinks they'll be successful because when you play against teams in the Power Five, like a Big Ten conference or a Big 12 conference, and they try to bully you, you have enough bodies in order to sustain that. And Bradley, up and over, a taller defender for his first bucket. We're tied at six. Boy, Shurfield is aggressive right now. Bradley has the loose ball. Might have been a little contact right there. Yeah, fellow Texan. <laughs> Guy that you actually played against. Yeah, played against him in some open gyms from the Dallas area, so very familiar with each other. That's a walk. Diabate turns it over. Matt Bradley just so hard to guard with the jab. He can just rise over the top because the release is so high. It's a good bucket right there. 26 points, 10 rebounds in the double overtime win against Fresno. He was the only Aztec, though, in double figures. And challenge and it's been met most of the year is how can you add to Bradley's scoring is it Pulliam is it Seiko's three is it Tamayach off the bench Cambridge buries a three Devin Cambridge he's like a microwave that man can heat up super quick Cambridge an elite defender and lately he's been really good last six games well over 55% in three-point shooting. Pulliam probing. Now Bradley, again against Coleman. Rises, missed it. Late in the shot clock. Sherfield shifts into gear. Stepping through Cambridge. Baker with the rebound. Missed the putback. San Diego State is not a team that will push it all that much in transition. Seiko, known for his timely three-point shooting and great defense. Bradley with the left hand. Coleman got him with the foul. That, this is not an easy assignment for Trey Coleman, who's a good defender for Nevada. It's not right there. Will Baker should have stayed. Will Baker leaves, and Matt Bradley sees the lane and wants to attack. Will Baker should have stayed. Make Bradley get the ball out of his hands and pass it to the big on the roll. 
Bradley, uh, you know, similar in, in style and effectiveness to Bryce Hamilton, the great scorer for UNLV, and that they are left-handed. And you may not think that's a big deal, but Steve Alford told us today at practice that is a big deal when you're trying to guard a guy like that. It definitely is. As a hooper, trust me, I know. Lefty, lefties are harder to guard because you're so used to being able to contest with your left hand. Because right-hand shooters, when you're on defense and you're facing them, you contest with the left hand. With the left-handed shooter, now you contest with the complete opposite hand. Because 95% of basketball players you play against are right-handed. So it just looks different. It's harder to contest. It's just a different feel. Now, believe me, they have their differences, Hamilton and Bradley. Bradley's a stockier guy, a stronger guy, more effective inside. Hamilton can maybe explode to the rim a little bit better. And they'll both be on display in Las Vegas at the Mountain West Tournament coming up this week on CBS Sports Network. There's definitely going to be some good hoops out there in Las Vegas. Yeah, there's four teams right now that Jerry Palm has in the NCAA Tournament. Baker can shoot the three, and he buries it. The transfer from Texas. Well, Baker, a guy who, the way he plays, you would think he's more of an outside, inside type of big, but he said today when we were talking to him, he likes to start in the inside and work his way out. I thought that was very interesting. He's had to do both this year, especially when Washington has been out. Baker Mazzara, and Baker Mazzara. This is a guy that has been really good off the bench for San Diego State, especially in road games. Had a 20-point game at Fresno State, chipped in with 15 at Utah State. Now, Butler trying to deny the ball from Sherfield. Foster driving, ball fake, left hand, missed it. And a rebounding foul on Tamayich. I think that's a great game plan right there. Will Baker stepping out, letting it fly. Big fella, not just a post player, but can step out. And Baker Mazzara, this guy right here is so good at getting to his pull up. Another lefty. We're saying, we're saying lefties all over the court tonight, Rich. That's right. It's a good night to be a lefty. <laughs> Baker, of course, transferred from Texas. Didn't play a lot last year. Oh, Sherfield is on, and that's that's not good news for San Diego State. That's not. Whenever you're going up against a guy who can average 16 and six assists, you have to eliminate one of them. You have to take away either his passing or his scoring. He's got six points. Mintz is back in. Butler, it's a three, and it's good. Lamont Butler, not known as a scorer, drops in a three. San Diego State's within a point. And you said it, not really known as a scorer, so that's a good sign. Whatever you can get out of Butler on the offensive end is always a positive. Seiko chasing Cambridge all over this floor. Mensa got in the passing lane, lost it to Hines, though. Hines spinning into a double. Johnson with the reach and the foul. Free throws for K.J. Hines. Steve Alford and Nevada talked about getting off to a good start. And you know what? The Wolfpack is off to a good start. A one-point lead in the final game of the Mountain West regular season. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more. By Daisy Cottage Cheese. Discover why only Daisy will do. And by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. That was the game where Buddy Bayheim channeled his inner Carmelo Anthony or Jerry McNamara and went off. And San Diego State struggled with that Syracuse zone. But the Aztecs look like they're headed back to the NCAA tournament right now, 20 and 7 and 12 and 4. Rich Waltz, along with former Baylor standout King McClure. We are in Reno. And right now, as we expected, this is a tight ball game. Very close game. I think for both teams, it means something. For Nevada, more so than San Diego State, because Nevada is definitely trying to play their way into the tournament. But it means something for both squads. Yeah, look, I mean, these guys, San Diego State, know, know what this whole NCAA tournament dance is about. Last year, 
They were a six seed when they lost to Syracuse. Grant Sherfield's a guy that, you know, much like Buddy Beheim or those McNamara or Mello, he's the type of guy that can shoot his team into wins. And one of the things Steve Alford is going to tell his team, he hasn't told him yet, but he told us today. He said, in a day or two, as you see Sherfield tonight, he's going to sit him down and tell him the story about when he was in Iowa when Steve Alford was coaching Iowa. They had a good team. They did not win. They won one game in February. They got to the Big Ten tournament. They won four straight, won the Big Ten championship, went to the NCAA tournament. It's impressive. That's why the conference tournaments are so important. Some of the best basketball you'll see all year is in the conference tournaments because teams are literally fighting for their season. If they do not win, they do not advance, they do not go to the tournament. And that's what you dream of as a kid. What you want to, that's why you go to college, to play in March Madness. Rebounding foul, Baker Mazzara. Steve Alford has taken four different schools to NCAA tournaments. And of course, his best run in the Mountain West at New Mexico, they were outstanding. Three NCAA tournament appearances. Iowa there, UCLA there. Southwest Missouri State there. And they have the firepower. If they're all firing on the same cylinder to cause some major headaches and make a run in the Mountain West tournament. It's a foul on Foster of Nevada. And that's the thing, King, about the Mountain West tournament. Everybody looks at the top four teams, although they're going ahead into the tournament, NCAA tournament, all that. But you go four through eight, and there's a bunch of teams they can get hot and win it. UNLV for yeah. one. Utah State for another. Orlando Robinson gets some help. Fresno State could be a problem. And of course, Nevada, if Sherfield and company are rolling, they could be a problem. You have great players and great teams in this conference, and the primary reason is because it's old. It's an older conference. When you look at the super seniors, the transfer portal, seniors, senior-led teams are teams who win in this time of the year. Himes, there's the double from Butler. Baker lost it. Anytime the ball is loose, that's San Diego State's. They usually get a hold of it and don't let it go back. 50-50 balls. Bradley is still out right now. And when he's out, the question is, where do the points come from for San Diego State? Baker Mazzara against Sherfield. Crosses over, gets in the lane, blocked by Keyshot Johnson. Could have maybe been a foul right there. Like there's a little bit of contact. The miss. Baker Mazzara in transition. San Diego State shooting 35% right now. Nevada, right around the same. Baker. Mensa the block and the foul. I like that matchup right there. Will Baker, just so skilled down low, has a plethora of moves, and Mensa just such a great defender. Defending lefties, we've already established, is difficult. But going against a lefty defender presents its own problems. And, and Mensa's a lefty, and that's, for a big, that can be an advantage. It could, especially when you're, for me, I'm a guard. So when I'm driving, let's say I drive and I get to my spot, Naturally, their natural contest is with the left hand. So the left hand is already in my shooting pocket. So right there, that's a better contest than the righty because the righty has to tell himself that he contests with the left, which is not my natural hand. So lefties are hard to go against, not hard to guard, but hard to go against as well. Baker with the free throw. In Nevada, on top, 16 to 13. Again, when these two teams played, it was a tight ball game. And let me add this. Grant Sherfield did not play. Warren Washington did not play. And it was a two-point San Diego State win. And that makes a huge difference. Yes, <laughs> it does. You're, 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 you're injured on the team, and then your post presence, you just does so much down low. Those two guys, if it to be that close, I'm really shocked. I'm sure Steve Alford didn't think it would be that close. Or maybe he did. As a coach, is supposed to think your, your team is going to win. But as a fan, I know people didn't think it was going to be close. Bradley's back in, Diabate in as well. Blackshear working against Butler. Oh, 
Coleman feeds Washington. Diabate, good defender in the blocks. And Washington with that left hand. That looked good right there. I love when Warren Washington can get the ball down low and score. Seiko missed the three. Diabate, the offensive rebound, falling down. Saves it. He played important minutes down the stretch against Fresno State. 23 minutes to be exact. Love when Warren Washington can get buckets. That looked good right there. The pro hop to the left hand jump hook. Not just the defender, but can also score down low. Washington missed eight games almost the entire month of February with dislocated fingers on his shooting hand, his right hand. So you saw that, obviously, the left-handed hook. Bradley pops open. Gets in tight and gets it up and over Washington. If you're Trey Coleman, you have to take away his left hand. He is so good when he gets the ball in his left hand and can go downhill. You must take that away first and foremost and hope your help side is on the right side. Easier said than done. I mean, there's a lot of guys around the country. That's an offensive foul. Bradley draws the charge from Trey Coleman. Right here, you see, you know Matt Bradley's a lefty. Cut his left side off, force him to go right. Yeah, it's easier said than done, but that's called scouting report. Pay attention to it. I know Steve Alford preached that on his scouting report, and you must pay attention right there. Steve Alford has a relatively young team. I mean, as you noted, this league is old. I yeah. mean, that, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, you've got a lot of guys that are in their fifth year or guys that have played a lot of basketball as seniors in key spots. Boise State, Colorado State. Right there. That last possession, Keenan Blackshirt took away his left hand, forced him to his right. Got a turnover on a backdoor pass. Sherfield back in, launches from 24 feet, and it's short. Sherfield six points, three of five from the field. Trying to feed Diabate. And it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay San Diego State basketball. Brian Dutcher and the Aztecs, Steve Alford, and the Wolfpack finishing the regular season. The Wolfpack, a three-point lead. Bracket Week presented by Kubota. We are in Reno. That is a cold river running through downtown. Believe me, 1815 Nevada on top. Tomorrow night, 6 Eastern. College lacrosse is back on CBS Sports Network. Number 11, Jacksonville and Utah. I'm not sure if you saw this, if you're a basketball fan. Obviously, if you're a San Diego State fan, you might have. Winston Shepard is a beloved figure in San Diego State basketball history. has been making a, a nice living playing over in Europe, was in Ukraine and had to be evacuated from Ukraine last week. Jeremy Schaap did a really good interview, and just fascinating. It's online if you want to watch it. But he, he, you know, his agent a couple times said, hey, I think you need to get out, I think you need to get out. And it wasn't until he heard a bomb drop in the city where he was staying that he and some teammates got in a car, drove to the border, walked across the border, got out, and it's great to hear that he's safe and back in the United States. Well, great to hear that that man is safe because I could not imagine hearing bombs flying over my head. And, no, I couldn't imagine that. So I, great, great to hear he's safe. And there's nothing but the best for him. He was a, a joy to watch at San Diego State. Yeah, he's a guy that did a little bit of everything. Look at how Black Show's guarding him right now. Forced to his right hand. Bradley out to Pulliam, who's back in. Baker Mazzara into the lane, and he walks. That's a travel. Right now, Nevada is doing a terrific job on this San Diego State offense. Sherfield with six to lead Nevada. Baker's got five. Cambridge. Washington 
Nice look, Cambridge rose up, and he was met in midair by Tamayic and Baker Mazar. Devin Cambridge, first off, good pass by him on Washington. Devin Cambridge, the first looked like he was about to dunk it, but I had second thoughts when he got up there. Nathan Mensa on the bench right now with two personal fouls. And two personal fouls now on Tamayic and two personal fouls on Chad Baker Mazzara. San Diego State does have depth, and they have depth with their bigs. That's one of the things Steve Alford told us today that makes them so good. When you can bring a guy back in like Keyshawn Johnson, Baker Mazzara sits down. Yeah, that's the key to success, being able to be eight to 10 deep in March, especially in the tournament. Long games, long games, hard games. Deep teams make deep runs. Matt Bradley's taking just three shots off a of screen. He's looking to get the basketball. Pick and roll with Tamayic. Draws two defenders. Pulliam rotates. Seiko three. That's nice. I love what they did right there. Get the ball out of Matt Bradley's hands. But right there, you have to choose between Seiko and Pulliam. I'm choosing Pulliam as to shoot the three. Don't overhelp right there. The tag, the, the second tagger tried to help. Don't overhelp right there. Yeah, Seiko oh. may be their best three point shooter. That was a wild dunk that went awry. Sherfield cleans it up, misses the three. And here comes Pulliam up the floor. Bradley a transition three, fouled, and he gets three free throws. This release is so high that it's hard to contest. Right here, Sherfield should have stayed with Seiko. Do not help off of him. Let Pullum shoot that three. And Bradley goes to the line now. San Diego State is 12 and four, as we noted at the, at the start of the telecast. Colorado State a narrow win at home in a thrilling game over Boise State right before ours. So Boise State the one seed, Colorado State the two seed, San Diego State the three seed. And Wyoming against UNLV in that 4-5 game in Las Vegas. Well, I got a chance to do a Boise State game early this year against Air Force. And Emmanuel Aikot is a player. A 6-8 point guard that can make reads off a of pick and roll. That's impressive. I played against him when he was at Arizona, and he was not doing that. So what he's doing now, it's very impressive. His growth, his development. I was like, wow. That's a really unique team. Abu Kijab. Oh, and yeah, and yeah, yeah. ACOT make it, make those, they're, they're, they've got length, they can play multiple positions, they can guard yeah. multiple positions. And they've got the best closer in the league in Marcus Shaver Jr., who's hit a ton of late threes to win games, tie games. Baker on a nice look, and he scores. Entry pass by Desmond Cambridge Jr. It's actually crazy. I played against KJ when he was at uh, Oregon, too. And he was not doing what he was doing. But right here, it's a great pass. Devin Cambridge doing things that he normally doesn't do. Passing the ball like that. Will Baker for the easy two points. Baker just a sophomore. Last year at Texas, two points, two rebounds. That's it. Not a lot of minutes. But, I mean, Texas had like an NBA front line last year, so that's not a surprise. Playing behind Jericho Sims and I forgot the other guy that was in Charlotte that got drafted, the super athletic one. That's great defense right there. Blackshear working hard, extracts the ball from Bradley's hands. One point game, Pulliam. The floater, oh, that's great. He is one of the very best at shooting on the move in the paint. I love the pace he played with right there. Came off the ball screen. Didn't rush it. Took his time. Saw what the big gave him. Great reverse. Put him so crafty. And he's getting away with an arm bar on Sherfield, and then finally it's blown. As it pulling him trying to keep Sherfield under check. Look at the pace right there. The stop and go. The hesitation. The hesitation froze the big, made the big lead. That was a great reverse. I love Pullum's game. He is somewhat of a reluctant scorer, but 
as I noted, it seems like a lot of his floaters and a lot of his shots came in, come in crunch time. I just wish he would shoot the ball a little better. If he could really shoot the three consistently, he'd be a, a terrific point guard, but his pace in the pick and roll is elite. Back to a one-point game. Five minutes left, first half here in Reno. All the seeds are set for Las Vegas, but this is an important game on the road for San Diego State and their NCAA tournament hopes slash seeding. William on the move. This time it's Cambridge that fouls him. I really like Blackshear on Bradley. I mean, Blackshear is a bigger guard, bigger than Bradley, just as strong. Can't post up, but right here, that's a foul. Cambridge sticking his hand in there. Got his hand caught. That's a clear foul. I feel like every, every nobody feels like they foul, Rich. <laughs> now, now, be honest. What were your reactions when when you fouled somebody? Was it like, yeah, I got him, I got my money's worth, or was it, what, are you kidding? Look, it really just depends on the situation. <laughs> if, if, if it's a crucial part of the game, I'm like, come on, ref, don't call that. But if I really got him, I'm like, all right, ref, I, I see what you did there. I, I fouled him. Sherfields. William gets that assignment. Baker comes. On the switch to Myatt, Sherfield. Yes, gets the roll. He's got 10 now. I love it. He gets to his mid range pull up just so easy. Baker extends the form. You can ride as a post defender. The rule is you can you can have the forearm in him, but if you displace him or if you extend the arm, it's an automatic whistle. Look at Scherzer right here, taking his time, hesitation. Ooh. Getting to his mid-range pull-up, and it's just butter. Tamayic at the line. 70% free throw shooter. Transfer from Maryland. He had one of the great defensive plays of the year for San Diego State at the end of that second overtime against Fresno State. Switched off a screen, stayed with the shooter, altered the shot, sealed the win. You know, one thing I've been super impressed with the San Diego State team is what you just said, their ability to stay in front of a defender in an isolated situation. They guard with their chest. That's why you normally see guys having to get to the middle. As we see Grant Sherfield, oh! Sherfield runs into Pulliam. That's a foul. Sherfield hits the three. Here's the sequence again. Great. The shot, the bump, and the whistle. Just under four minutes left in this first half. 29-25 Nevada on top of San Diego State. AT&T at the half is coming up. Already in New York for you, Brent Stover, Chris Walker, John Rothstein, Seth Davis, Jerry Palm. Not necessarily in that order, but they're there and they're waiting in our New York studio. AT&T at the half. King McClure, this is the initial contact before the three. Pulliam stumbles, Sherfield separates. And there's no excuse for this. Yeah, pull them has to be better than that. You're a fifth year senior. You have to be smarter than that. I know you got scored on. I know you felt like you got this place because you did. He did push off right there. But you have to be better than that by pulling. Pull them honestly got lucky because a lot of times they might have called that a flagrant. But to just get a common foul, he got lucky right there. It will be free throws. Or will it be sideline out of bounds? It'll be sideline out of bounds because it's an offensive foul. A common, rather uncommon common foul. <laughs> a, but, co a common foul that looked way worse than what it But it costs it San Diego State a possession, so it's it as does. good as a turnover. Especially when you talk to both coaches and they say this league comes down to one to two possession games. Yeah. It's a five-second count. Nevada gives it right back. They give it right back. 
Steve Alford not happy. The turnovers just about even. It's a four point game. If you're just stopping by, Nevada and San Diego State finishing the regular season. San Diego State knows they're the three seed in the Mountain West tournament. Right now they're a nine seed in the NCAA, according to R. Jerry Palm. He will expound upon that at halftime coming up from New York. Seiko rises and buries a mid range jumper. Seiko, knowing that, known as a three point shooter, get to the mid range jumper. He's played pretty well tonight. He is a solid, solid dude, that Adam Seiko. His brother's having a nice year after sitting out for a few games with injuries. Arthur Kaluma of Creighton. Creighton has uh, had to overcome a lot with the uh, injury to their young point guard, Nemhart. But they're playing well right now, and uh, Arthur Kaluma is part of that. He's averaging close to 10 points a game. I don't know why. I feel like this year we're seeing so many injuries. Is it just me, or is it? Like a common theme in college basketball this year. A lot of guys are just getting injured. Shot clock's down, got to get it up. Baker doesn't even see the clock. And last two possessions for Nevada, the five second count, and then a shot clock violation. It's just a great defense of San Diego State right there. Kept the ball in front on the side to side actions. They stayed solid. Great shot clock violation. Aztecs starting to shoot the ball a little better now. They're back up to 47%. Bradley off the screen. Good job by Foster on the switch. Drive there. Bono blocked. And that's Blackshear. Sherfield hunting his shot. He's got 13. Into the lane. And I think he was surprised there was no one in his face. Foster down, and he got his feet tangled with Bradley. a great block right here. Looked like maybe both of them got it. Oh, it was Washington. Oh, Washington got that one. It was Washington. They were both there. Such a great rim protector <laughs> is Warren Washington. Either one of them could have had it. That's a great look. Bradley to the line in a two-point game. One of the Achilles heels of San Diego State. Not necessarily their kryptonite, but something to watch. Free throw shooting has not been great. They've been under 70% throughout the season. And late in games, Every now and then, they've had some issues. Bradley, though, close to 80% in the season, drains a couple and ties this game up at 29. court pressure. Nevada worked on this at shoe round today. Steve Alford said they are gonna press you. Matt Bradley such a dynamic scorer, but I'm more impressed with his defensive ability. Being able to keep somebody in front of him and working that hard on the offensive end is not easy to do. Seiko's wide open for a three. Bradley on the right side. Spinning against Foster. That's great defense right there from Foster. Butler cuts. And Himes fouled him. Two minutes left in this first half. Great defense from Foster. And uh, I don't know about that one. Uh, I don't know about that one, Rich. I'm with you. Butler's at the line. Free throw is up and good. He's a 76% free throw shooter. And the Aztecs tonight, outstanding at the line. They are 9 of 10. Johnson, offensive rebound, and a quick bucket. Those are the plays that cost you. That's unacceptable. On a free throw line, you must block out. That is a cardinal rule. That right there will make coaches madder than anything. Sherfield with 13 points. He's 5 of 9. Off a screen. Cuts the defense. And passes over the head of Himes. If he had that to do over again, he probably would have shot it. Now you must block out of your world, Baker. You have one job. Keep your man from getting the rock. And right there. Johnson got around him. But good follow right there. Johnson just plays so hard. And 
Those are the plays he makes. That's why this team is so good. Minute and a half left. Entertaining first half. Bradley. 11 points. That's a three. Missed it. Johnson on the boards. Seiko carried it. That's not a carry. He didn't go anywhere. That's not a carry because he didn't put the ball back down. He picked it up. That's not a carry. Watch right here. He didn't put it back down. He passed it as soon as it went high. That's not a carry. It's a bad call. Ryan Dutcher is saying exactly that right now. To no avail. <laughs> Grant Sherfield is one of the pure scorers in the game right now. You said a pure scorer. I call him the mid-range killer because he can get to that mid-range unlike anybody else. So elite, so tough going downhill on a stop and pop. And oh, a little push off, but it's okay. Sometimes scorers have to push off to get the separation. Nevada now down three. Sherfield bangs home another. That's a three. He's got 16. And we're even again. He read that perfectly. The defender tried to fight it over the top. He stepped back to try to get that separation. Read the screen perfectly. Butler getting to the bucket and finishing. And a foul on Butler. On the inbound, again, trying to deny the ball from Sherfield. And then simply put Sherfield at the line. That's what you have to do right now, get the ball out of his hands. I guess the good thing for San Diego State is Sherfield scoring, he's not being a passer. You have to eliminate one of them because a guy who can get you 17 points and six assists, which could lead to 12 to 18 points, you can't have that. Sure. Perfect, perfect example. Yeah, sure. My, knocks down a free throw. My junior year, we were playing against Trey Young, and Trey Young averaged like something crazy, like 28, 9, or 6. So in the scouting report, coach said you either have to make him a passer or make him a scorer, but you can't let him do both. Same thing with Sherfield. You either have to make him a passer or a scorer, but he can't do both because that's when he's at his best, and that's when he'll kill you. Eight second differential. Butler to the bucket. Over Washington. Washington has to stay down right there. You're down there for a reason to protect the rim. That's too easy. Stay down, put your hands up, make them score over your lane. Sherfield in the final seconds of the first half. He has 17 points on 6 of 10 shooter. Difficult shot. And an air ball. And some pushing afterwards. And Aztec went down hard into the Nevada cheerleaders. Himes was there for Nevada. Officials were on it quickly. All's well that ends well. <laughs> Everybody cool. Everybody on the way to the locker room. Entertaining first half here. San Diego State, a three-point lead over Nevada. Final regular season game of the Mountain West. We're headed to Brent. And the gang in New York with AT&T at the half. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Welcome back to Bracket Week, presented by Kubota in Reno, biggest little city. Not just in the Mountain West, not just in the West, in the world. 36-33, San Diego State on top of Nevada. Rich Waltz, along with King McClure. It feels like this game is going to come down to which defense can stop the other team's best score. And for that, that has been Nevada, because Grant Sheffield has been on the tear tonight, but Matt Bradley has struggled. Only two field goals in the first half. And these are the two field goals right here. The tough jumper over Trey Coleman and getting the ball to his left hand, which we have not seen a lot. We've seen him take it away, but that time, and not take it away. But on the other side, this guy, Grant Sherfield. Oh, my goodness, Rich. We saw him put on the show, the floater right here. Get to his mid-range pull-up and the push. 
doing defenders so dirty, they turn around and push him on the floor. <laughs> this man, Sherfield, had a heck of a first half. Most of the numbers are pretty much dead evens. Rebounds are even, free throws made are even, fouls are even, turnovers are even. The one variable, though, points off turnovers. Nevada's done a better job of that, and points in the paint advantage San Diego State. You never see the points off turnovers be flip-flop like that, especially when you're going up against the San Diego State team. Sherfield did not play against San Diego State in that two-point game, that two-point win by the Aztecs down in San Diego in early February. Bradley in that game had 26 points. So here we go, second half, three-point game. 20 minutes left in the regular season in the Mountain West. Sherfield rolls around. There's bodies all over the place. Blackshear <laughs> was down. Bradley was down. Everybody went to the floor. Everybody did. I don't even know what happened. Oh, they ran into each other. And the foul is on Butler. Oh, wow. That was... That was a hard foul. And the Aztecs are just so physical. Which I'm here for it. I love the physicality because I'm a physical type of guard. So I'm here for it. That was your reputation at Baylor. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely physical. William with the rebound. Off the miss. Length of floor. Johnson finds Bradley. Back to Johnson. Missed the shot. Mensa cleans it up. Mensa spent most of that first half on the bench with two fouls. He played just seven and a half minutes. I think that was a great call right there because he's so valuable to this team. And down the stretch, we're going to need his rim protection, his defense, in order to close the game out. He has been picking up early fouls, and, and Brian Dutcher talked about that today. Blackshear, Mensa with a block. Johnson ahead. Butler in transition. Johnson finish, and San Diego State, defense leading to offense. They've opened up their biggest lead of the game at seven. That's the defense right there. When Mensa's in the game, his shot blocking led to that easy run out. Nevada needs to settle down right now. Sherfield around the screen. Throws up a, a runner and misses wildly. Polia. This feels like one of those stretches that Steve Alford talked about today with five, six minutes where things don't go right for Nevada and they stop scoring. This should be two. And it is Coleman on a nice pass from Sherfield. Great run out right there, great steal. But you're right, they get into these stretches where they cannot put the ball in the hole. Sherfield will struggle. Somebody needs to be able to answer. Pulley and Lob, Mensa, met at the rim by Coleman, and that's Coleman's foul. But, but even more importantly, I think when they get into those stretches where they're not scoring in the half court, they must lock in extra on the defensive end in order to get these easy runouts like we saw right there. So Coleman, after that bucket, picks up a foul two minutes in, second half. Daniel Foster checks in. That's the third personal on Coleman. He's a valuable guy. He started the game and was defending Bradley and did a pretty nice job on him. Then Blackshear got a hold of the Bradley assignment, and that's Pulliam with a 17-footer. This is too easy. Took the ball out, got, the, got it right back off the handoff. Way too easy. Cambridge got some space, missed the shot. Washington missed the tip. Pulliam races in, rises up, and hits another. It's not necessarily a mid-range game. It's a short-range game for him. Need to right here. And they take one. Steve Alpha wants to talk it over. What a start here. A 10-2 run for San Diego State. They've hit six of their last seven shots. And Nevada right now is on their heels. It's a nine-point Aztec lead. It's 44-35 in the blink of an eye to open up the second half. San Diego State with a good run here. Hey, it's Bracket Week, so we got brackets for you. And this is the Patriot League. And tomorrow at 2 Eastern, CBS Sports Network will have the semifinals. Colgate, Lehigh, 
Boston University and Navy. It's the road to the Final Four here on CBS Sports Network. Speaking of brackets and speaking of the road to the Final Four, Jerry Palm right now has four teams in the Mountain West. Colorado State barely beat Boise at home. That was a great game. They may meet again in the championship game in Las Vegas. San Diego State will have something to say about that. They're a ninth seed, and Wyoming got a huge win yesterday, despite a big game from Orlando Robinson of Fresno State. That felt like almost a must win. The Cowboys got that in overtime, and it all sets up for what should be just a crazy good Mountain West tournament. We've got the quarterfinals on Thursday, the semifinals on Friday, and the championship game on CBS on Saturday from Las Vegas. Out of the timeout, nicely done. Nevada gets a close one, and Washington puts it in. I like that. I like that draw up right there by Coach Alford. Go inside, get something easy, go to the big fella, and he delivers. Williams hit two big shots. Mensa from William. Wow. But you cannot get an easy bucket then give up an easy dunk on the pick and roll right there. Goes to show you that both coaches can draw plays yeah. during a timeout and both did a nice job of it. Somebody has to stay attached. The help side. The big stayed. They should have switched right there. That's just too easy. No tag, no help side on the opposite end. Somebody has to step up and take that away. Mensa tonight, six points, three of five, three rebounds. Bradley feeds the post. Mensa against Washington. Butler in a crowd. That's a difficult pass. Cambridge. Tough to find daylight against San Diego State in the paint. Turnover, Nevada. They just do a great job of clogging the lane and not giving you those driving lanes that you used to see on other teams. Bradley, good screen. Mensa's rolling. Bradley's shooting. Mensa runs it down. Bradley, three, got it. You cannot give a player of his caliber two looks, two good looks, matter of fact. The first one was uncontested, and the second one, the wide open three. Can't give him two good looks. Cambridge getting muscled and doubled and fouled. You see the reaction. I'd, I'd react that way if I were Cambridge, too, man. Matt, Matt Bradley. Matt Bradley. Heating up. Struggling the first half, but the second is a different story. Forty-nine thirty-seven right now. San Diego State has opened up a 12-point lead over Nevada. Four and a half minutes into the second half. Reese's player profile. Warren Washington, the eight games, that, that was a big chunk. Fractured finger and a couple dislocated fingers as well. Starting to get back into that rhythm, and that's good news for them headed towards Las Vegas. Last three games, 76% from the field. Might as well throw it to him every single time because that is an automatic bucket. All right, news and notes, the North Carolina upset over Duke certainly ruined uh, that final game for Coach K, but he'll head to the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament as well. Big 12, Kansas outlasting Texas in OT. That was a great game. Texas always plays Kansas tough. I don't know why that is, but that was a great game. Baylor and Kansas are now the co-champs of the Big 12. Love to see it. And Texas Tech goes down to the Big 12. Oklahoma State getting a Bryce Thompson three under 20 seconds. Now, off the timeout, Sherfield pops out, corner three, got it. That was nice. That's a big shot right there because Nevada's in the danger zone right now, especially with the San Diego State team and their aggression. That was a big shot. 20 for Sherfield, three of five from distance. In his 13th game of 20 or more points this year. Pick and roll, Pulliam and Tamayich. 
versatile guy to Myatt. He can go inside and outside. Sweeping hook off the glass. Uh -oh. And a rebound to Nevada. And a man down. It's Bradley. He's still down underneath the bucket. Other end of the floor. Blackshear open for a three. Missed it. Bradley is up. You can see him at the far side. That's a nice uh, thing to see for Brian Dutcher in the Aztecs. Bradley head fake. Wow. I always hate it when guys put their hand in the, in the offensive player's face when they're on defense. It does nothing. It does absolutely nothing because you can rise over the top of it and pop just like Bradley did right there. Surefield penetrated, but Butler poked the ball loose. Here's what happened to Matt Bradley. Got hit in the back of the head. Dude's put together. And he's coming back. Bradley and Adam Seiko announcing this week that they will be coming back for the a COVID senior year that they are eligible for. Baker driving, spinning. And Nevada's missed a couple of tight shots. Still an 11 point San Diego State lead. Remember, 48 hours ago, they played a couple of overtimes. Bradley is fouled for the second time beyond the arc, and he'll get three free throws. Coleman, not real pleased with that. It's his fourth. Now, every single time Coleman has been on Bradley, bad things have happened. This is a foul. You hit him on the elbow. That is a foul. If you look at Bradley's buckets, all of his buckets have been on Coleman. The two drive, the drive early in the first half, the mid-range pull-up in the first half, the mid-range pull-up we saw over there, and now the three right here, right there. A lot of his buckets have been on Coleman. So defending the three is hard to do. Yeah. Defending Bradley shooting the three, I think, is even harder. He seems to hide the ball yeah. quite well. Because he shoots the ball. He, 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 his, his release is high, but it's also a little bit over his head. So it's hard to get a really good contest on it because he might foul when he comes forward. However, if you climb up in him, take away that space, you can take away the jumper right there. Foster and Blackshear have done a great job of that tonight. But well, this is a really physical, every rebound, every loose ball contested. Foster, Himes, Cambridge, Sherfield, Baker in for Nevada. Bradley rips down the rebound. And multiple players hit the deck, and the foul is going against Nevada. Tamayich was down for San Diego State. Cambridge is down. Oh, no, that, that's a bad call right there. Cambridge was running. Tamayich ran into him. That's a bad call. What would you call? Is that a no call? Yeah, I, I'm saying a no call, but if it's a foul, it's a foul to my, to, uh, to my age because he clearly ran into, ran into the Cambridge. Bradley baseline, kicks, rotates, Seiko three. Cambridge has the rebound. Nevada trying to make a run here like San Diego State did to start the second half. Cambridge catch and shoot, missed it. Foster rebound. And a foul under the bucket. I'll tell you one thing, Rich. Nevada needs to find a second scoring option. Because right now it looks like it look it looks like it is Grant Sherfield by himself trying to get it done. Yeah, and the and the two guards that play in the backcourt with him 
are struggling. Combined, they're just one of 13. Blackshear's 0 for 7. Cambridge is 1 for 6. They need another option, another scoring option, because Grant Sherfield cannot beat this team by himself. The Aztecs are too good on the defensive end. Not a great pass. Sherfield with the defense retrieves it. Long pass, Baker, and he missed. You got to have those. Those are the ones you have to come away with. Baker Mazzara goes down, and a foul on Nevada. And some fireworks. And I think San Diego State's bench is going to get a technical foul. So much to dissect it. Right, you want to look at the original foul here. Well, let, let, let's start with the original foul. That's just a dumb foul. That's not a smart play. Running out on a shooter, you're a senior, you shouldn't make that play. Then, if you're San Diego State, you're bench. Yeah, you can't come off the bench. You or... can't come off, stay on the bench. There's no reason for you to be getting involved in the game and talking like that. That's not a smart play for San Diego. Two not smart plays by upperclassmen guys. Matt Bradley, you're too good for that. Don't put your hand on the guy right there, especially when you're not on the court. And it looked like Baker Mazzara was the one that was teed up. We will get an, a, an official interpretation, but right now the officials are watching. They want to see who came up off the bench. Mensa. And it looks like they're pointing at Baker Mazzara. Now that could be a point towards a, just the, the bench itself, yeah. or it could be Baker Mazzara that gets the technical. The foul on Cambridge on the three-point shot is his fourth person. That's certainly not good news. You got Cambridge with four and Coleman with four. There was just no need for that. I don't see why Bradley put his hand on That's it. a smart move by Mensa yeah, to get smart move Bradley by away from it. But I just don't see why Bradley felt like he needed to get involved in that play. Now, the official came over to speak with you. What did, what did you hear? He said it's a common foul on the three and a technical foul. Um, so they're going to shoot two. They're going to shoot two. The Aztecs will shoot three. And you can see the Nevada coaches, Craig Neal, Steve Alford's number one assistant and Alford there. Sherfield gets to the line and when he's done, Baker Mazzara gets his free throws. is on Chad Baker Mazzara. The official just came over to deliver that news. So he'll take the free throws. Baker Mazzara now with three personals. right now this, this game is ground to a halt. As a result, San Diego State's lead stretches to 15, and that's the biggest of this ball game. Need to get some answers from somebody other than Sheffield. Baker thought about a three, now drives the lane, kicks. Blackshear. And it, look, it's hard in the lane against San Diego State. They have bigs who can defend, and they've got a lot of them. 
the versatility on the defensive end from this Aztec squad is what makes them so tough. The guards can, they're strong, they're physical, they switch, the bigs can stay in front of cards on perimeter. Just so versatile. Blackshear in the lane. Johnson, no foul. That was a hard shot. Probably should have been a whistle. Baker Mazzara driving. Foul. Got it! What a turn of events. Yeah, I, I just don't know. How you don't call it on one end right here. Uh, from that angle. From that angle, it looked like he might have came down a little bit. But then you call it on this end. I just feel like that's very inconsistent. 17-point lead. Baker Mazar, another free throw coming. And he drains that. He's been a, a nice shot in the arm offensively in the second half. Sherfield, he can't do it all alone. He's got 21 tonight. Baker driving, and he's fouled by Tomajic. Timeout on the floor right now. San Diego State has stretched the lead to 18. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rogue, Dweekin, and by Reaper's Peanut Butter Cups. Downtown Reno, hopping tonight. King McClure, you were wondering, could San Diego State supplement Matt Bradley's points? And they've done it pretty nicely in a balanced way. I think that's the biggest difference in this game. San Diego State has been able to find a second score, and Nevada has Nevada has relied solely on Sheffield. Matt Bradley, of course, is the the biggest impact transfer in the Mountain West, it's coming from Cal, and he's going to be at San Diego State for another year. He announced this past week. Donovan Williams, and importantly for UNLV, is that supplement to Bryce Hamilton scoring. And that gives UNLV fans hope that they, uh, they can make a run in the tournament on their home floor. Donovan Williams, the guy who I saw when he was at Texas. Super great athlete. There's three Texas transfers in the Mountain West making impact. Three out of the timeout by Cambridge. And good hard work by Blackshear. A bucket and a free throw. They need, they need a lot of more of those, more hustle plays, being able to get those 50-50 balls in order to get back in this game. 16 down, 16 with 11 minutes and 30 seconds to go. That's a long time. The game is not over, but they must be able to take care of each possession and get stops. Remember, I, we talked about the numbers. That's the first field goal for Cambridge. He's now one of nine. Or excuse me, for Blackshear, he's one of nine. And for Cambridge, he's one of seven. Two guys who used to give you buckets are yes. struggling tonight. Without question. Cambridge averages 16 a game. Blackshear, eight a game. Bradley. Probing. Falling away. Scoring. Bradley. Makes it look easy, doesn't it? That's just way too easy, Rich. You allow him to get to his left hand, to get to his pull-up. Let's make it tougher on Baker missed the three. Again, Blackshear. Great offensive rebound. Sherfield. Bucket. Yeah, that's cash. Anytime he gets to the mid-range jumper, he might as well go ahead and count it. Sherfield now 8 of 15, 23 points. I like this look right here. Thought it might have been a zone, but got into the man. William bump from behind. And that's Blackshear's second personal. Matt Bradley, they're just letting him get to his left hand. He gets any bit of separation. He can stop and pop and rise over the top. And Grant Sherfield, when he gets to that mid-range, you might as well just go ahead and count him. Bradley and Blackshear. 
Blackshear again. Muscling, got in, falling away. Uh-uh, not this time. Washington has the rebound for Nevada. Yeah, Blackshear's not a guy you want to bully. He's solid, solid 6'6 six, six right there. You're not bullying him. Wow. Washington goes down. Ball's going to stay with Nevada. A lot of moving parts to that one. Yeah, so that, that's... And that. Mensa got a piece of it, clearly, on that replay. Yeah, I mean, that's just not... Not going to call the foul right there. Okay. Sherfield. Sure got to clear out that Sherfield sure work. He's got Mensa on him. Clear out that sure. That's a bomb. Late shot clock. Oh, man. Cambridge. Offensive rebound. Missed it. Got to come away with those. Got to capitalize on the second shots right there. Must capitalize. Just 33% from the field right now for Nevada, and that's really hurting him. That's like Coleman's fifth. Yep, Coleman's done. Coleman played all of 14 minutes in this game before fouling out here. Right here, you have to know if you're Trey Coleman, you have to be smart. You cannot do anything that even looks like a foul. If it looks like a foul, they're, they're probably going to call it. You have to be smarter than that, knowing you have for it. Test up, let them hit you, keep your hands out the play. You have to be able to play without your hands. You have four fouls. Foul Benson gets two. First free throw of the night goes down. Seven points, four rebounds. Remember, Mensa didn't play a lot. He was in foul trouble in the first half. Nevada actually was in the lane early. I think that was a courtesy no whistle. And Butler's going to get a foul in backcourt. personal on Butler. Again, I think all of his fouls have come trying to deny Sherfield the ball. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a smart gesture. You just can't foul 94 feet away from the basket. That's putting him at the free throw line, giving him two easy points. You're up by 16. You must be smarter than that. Sherfield with 24 now. But again, Nevada doesn't have a, a, another score with more than seven. Baker's got seven. Sherfield now with 25 of the 48 points. This Aztec defense is way too good to let one person beat them. That's not happening. I like this look right here. I like this change up, this one through one zone. Give them a different look. Butler hits the three. But you have to be able to locate shooters and not give guys open shots. No matter what defense you're playing, man or zone. That's his second three of the ball game. Sherfield thought about the jumper. Blackshear against Bradley. Step back three. Yeah. He has a lot of tools. Fourteen point lead. Lots of time left. Eight forty-five. Got out the zone quick. Smart decision. Take away the left hand right here. Goes to his right. That's great Offensive defense foul. right there. Take away his left hand. Force it to his right and Butler. Knock it down for the shots. If he can do this consistently, that'd be dangerous. And Black's on the other end. He's just picking up where he left off in the past three games. Yeah. Foster has done a great job on the defensive end when it comes to guarding Matt Bradley, taking away his left hand and making it tough. Whenever he has to go to his right, it's super hard for him. Cambridge. It's getting a little uh, rough out there. I mean, look, it's hard and knows to begin with, but there have been some things away from the ball in the last uh, few minutes. I'm liking this. I, I like the chippy games. I'm here for it, Rich. Yeah. 
little chin music there. Well, out of bounds, and it's an Aztec basketball. That's just great defense for Mensa, able to get the block, and then Washington tipped it out. Mensa's had an impact on this game in the second half. Nick Mazar around the screen. Bradley out of the game now. Keyshawn Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Keyshawn Johnson opened his season one for 20 from three. He's hit five of his last eight. Only shoot 19 on the year. It's okay, though, because he's making it when it matters in March. Pulliam up ahead, Seiko in transition. Trailing is Mensa. Why not? Oh, man, no uh, sir. Maybe not. That's not the shot you take, Mensa. No, sir. A little off target. Bob for Washington and a foul by Mensa. Timeout on the floor. Keyshawn Johnson, right now, a hot three point shooter. lead has been pretty steady in double figures for San Diego State since their run to start the second half. 68-51. Uh, and of course, when we are done here, a lot to talk about. Racket Week, of course, continuing here on CBS Sports Network. College basketball experts in the studio. Jerry Palm is there. Seth Davis is there. John Rothstein, Chris Walker, Brent Stover. A lot to chew on in this day of college basketball. Last day of the regular season you ask around in fact I asked Mark Fisher one of the assistant coaches of San Diego State who's the most underappreciated Aztec outside of the Aztec family and he said AG and that's a what a rope and if you want inspiration Mark Kreidler wrote a really nice article a couple days ago in the San Diego Union Tribune about a rope and his journey to San Diego State he and his family had to flee civil war in the Sudan. They ended up in Omaha, Nebraska. All 11 of them in a three bedroom apartment. He made his way to San Diego State. He is not available tonight. He will be available for the Mountain West Tournament. He's a guy that they have to use sparingly and strategically because his body is so banged up. He told Brian Dutcher he was done after the NCAA tournament last year. And uh, he was coming back to get his degree. Dutch said, hey, that's great. When he got back in the fall, though, Dutch said, hey, you know, why don't you come around the gym a little bit? And the more he came around, the more he decided, you know, maybe I do want to give it one more try. This is a great story of perseverance right there. And to be one of 11 in a three-bedroom apartment and to be able to overcome so much adversity, uh, that's just a testament of a story. That's incredible player and I would love to have somebody like that on my team so no surprise that Dutch wanted him. Seiko lob, Tomajic back out, Pulliam's floater. He rarely misses that but he missed that one. One of the rare misses I've probably ever seen him have on a floater. Foster got the three much needed for Nevada. There's time. Seven minutes left. It's a 12 point San Diego State lead. Oh, yeah, it's definitely time. One thing, don't panic, but you have to play without fouling. Nice job breaking the press for San Diego State. Get stops and push. Matt Bradley not on the floor. He's got 20 points. Seiko, offensive rebound. Shot clock down. Pulliam takes a look at it against Foster. Johnson got to get it up. Contact there. Beats the clock. Makes the bucket. And I think the officials are going to look at this to see if indeed it went down or was released. Excuse me. Whether it was released in time to beat the shot clock. Because it was right around the clock 
Or maybe they're looking at that to see if Keyshawn Johnson oh. got the elbow up around the face. It was actually closer than I thought as far as the shot clock violation. Yeah, we don't have a look yet, but I think we do. Oh, that's close. Ooh, that's closer than I thought it was. No bucket. Shot clock, shot clock violation. violation. That's a good stop right there. Good stop. Get a bucket. You make a three. See, it's a single possess. It's a single digit ball game. Right now, the key thing is continuing to get stops. Whether the ball goes in, you must continue to get stops. He gets some points from someone other than Sherfield. He's got 25 of them, eight of 16. No one else in double figures for Nevada. Sherfield around the screen. Double gets a man down. That's okay. Seiko. And Washington is fouled. Seiko is down and grabbing the back of his neck. Sherfield helping him up. Runs into this screen right here. And oh, that's not fun at all. I've been on the opposite side of that. That's not fun. Tamayic, whose man did the screening, ends up with the foul and heads to the bench. You blame your big on stuff like that. You, so that's Tamayic's fault. You have to be able to call that screen out and let your guard know. Screen, screen, screen. So that doesn't happen because if you get blindsided, that's one of those things after the game as a guard, you, you have to go talk to your big fella about it. Washington's a good free throw shooter. And Nevada draws a little bit closer. Remember for San Diego State, they've run a gauntlet of games against really good teams in the last two, two and a half weeks. And 48 hours ago, they played a double overtime game at San Diego State. Washington misses on that. But that, that hasn't seemed to affect their energy and their will to defend and rebound. That's just who they are. That's the identity. Benson. Against Washington with the left hand. Mensa in there, out of bounds, Nevada ball. Got a little fortunate right here. There was three Aztec defenders down, and they should have came around with that. Sure fields. Washington went down. Off the screen, Sherfield rises and hits. 27 for Sherfield, and it's down to single digits now. Single digit game. You don't have to press, you don't have to panic. A lot of time on that clock. You see the 8 0 run, five minutes left. San Diego State, when they have the lead with five minutes left, they are renowned for not giving it up. That's a trademark of their program. Johnson. And he's fouled by numerous Nevada players. We'll see who gets the foul. Take a look at this foul right here. Probably Foster. I'd give it to Foster. Foster foul him first. He's got three. And here is Keyshawn Johnson. It's another guy who's underappreciated because he can guard just about anybody in that rotation. And from one through five, Keyshawn Johnson could probably guard you and he guards you well. Yeah, I'd call him a hybrid. Because he can play in the perimeter, but he's also a post player. Gets a lot of work done in the mid post area. But you're right, he can step out, guard guards, and he can guard big. So I'd call him more of a hybrid. The typical four in the NBA and in college. And suddenly he can shoot the three over the last <laughs> few games. I don't know where that came from. Washington runs into Mensa and then bangs it off the glass. And Nevada draws a little closer. It's an eight point game. That's that 76% right there. Feed the big fella and he's going to get you one. San Diego State has kept the crowd out of this. Mensa comes for the screen. Polya contact bucket. Free throw. That, that's a foul. They're sitting there looking 
in shock. That's a foul on the shooter, on the shooting hand. Let's take a look at this. This is a foul right there. Bad angle, but if you look at the angle I saw, he got him on the hand. That's a clear cut foul, easy as day. Pulliam now in the double figures. 11 points with that free throw. Matt Bradley's got 20. Pulliam 11. Butler 11. Baker Mazzara with 8. He shot Johnson with 8 as well. Sherfield in. And he'll get to the line. We will step aside. Final minutes in Reno. Wolfpack trying to come back. Bracket Week presented by Capota. In the Mountain West, all signs point towards Las Vegas in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Last game of the regular season, San Diego State by 11. Pound for Pound is brought to you by Rogue Fitness. Nathan Mensa doing work. Throw it up for the big fella and he will catch it. Seven points, four rebounds. Been a team effort for San Diego State. Rebounds are dead even. The difference in this ballgame, San Diego State is shooting 53% from the field, and Nevada just 36%. That's the defense. We talked about it earlier, and the defense of the Aztecs is, you don't see a lot of points. You don't see a lot of good looks, neither. Sherfield with that free throw. Sherfield, 28 points. Drops that one in. He's come close to a triple-double a couple times for Nevada. They haven't had a triple-double around here in like 43 years. The uh, the great Johnny High back in 1979. That's way before New Rich. He shot Johnson, Mensa, and that's going back to Nevada. It's a nine-point game. There's 3.43 left. There is time for Steve Alford and the Wolfpack. For Johnson, you have to be better than that. Three minutes to go, up by nine. If it's not a for sure layup, do not turn the ball over. Cambridge with a three. Six-point game. Timeout, San Diego State. Nevada's not done yet. Now the crowd is into it. Nevada has drawn within six, 328 left. We revisit King McClure's Daisy Cottage Cheese. Keys to the game. For San Diego State, they have found a second score. They found multiple second scores. And for Nevada, 12 turnovers is kind of high, especially with three minutes to go in the game. But San Diego State, that's why they're winning the game, because they have found multiple second scores. Last three and a big one. One for eight before this three was Desmond Cambridge Jr. That's a big one. Foul in backcourt's gonna bring Pulliam to the line. And he gets two free throws. Both teams in the double bonus right now. See, so Nevada has just the one timeout. San Diego State's got three left. And the arrow going San Diego State's way. Short, Washington has the rebound, and the lead is seven. Down by seven, must value each possession right now. San Diego State has a whole squadron of great on-ball defenders. 
Pulliam is one. Seiko's another. Johnson another. Steve Alford trying to find points. Sherfield. A quick consultation with Alford. Cambridge was fouled there. 72% free throw shooter. He gets two. San Diego State foul on Pulliam. He's got three. And this is as close as Nevada has been since the early stages of the second half. Full court pressure. Bradley's double ball stolen. Cambridge driving. Missed it. Ball's loose and Pulliam has it. Big opportunity. So a five-point game. That Bradley has been very quiet this past five six minutes. Pulliam uses the screen. He's doubled. Good try. Steps through it. Lost it. Got it back. Floats it up. Bradley or Keyshawn Johnson scores! The shot clock was sitting at 30 for a while there. It really didn't start or stop at the end of that possession. And on the other end, another foul by San Diego State. This was the opportunity. And yeah. Cambridge, almost like he was awaiting Look, that contact. Might, that might have been something. I don't know what that was, Rich, but that had to be something. It looked like something, like maybe a travel, but it did not look clean. Sherfield, sure one of the best free throw shooters in the league, misses. Down seven. Butler's in. Pulliam's out. Thirty for Sherfield. Six-point ball game. Pressure stays on. Johnson throws it away. Turnover, San Diego State. And maybe all these games they've played and the double overtime on Thursday is starting to show. Yeah, I don't like Keyshawn Johnson down there trying to break the press. As a big man, that's not where you're supposed to be. Big men are not used to getting trapped right there in the backcourt. They're used to getting trapped in the front court, but not in the backcourt. Johnson's out. It's a four-guard look now for the Aztecs with Bradley, Butler, Seiko, and Pulliam joining Mensa. I like this lineup right here. You're struggling to take care of the ball. What do you do? You put more guards in to have more options to bring the ball up. Cambridge trying to get loose. Finds Washington for a two-hand slam. That was a great play right there. Cambridge came off the three. Two defenders on him. Saw his big roll hard. Great awareness. Bradley breaks the press. Got heat behind him, and it's stolen. Tipped away. Blackshear. Sherfield. Washington again, and he goes down. He got hit in the face, it looks like, and he's down hard in the lane. I couldn't even see the foul because my man was right here standing in front of me. Two minutes left. It's a four-point game. And it looked like Pulliam's elbow inadvertently caught him. Washington is still down. And he is bleeding. I don't think that I wasn't intentional. No, but certainly a foul. Yeah, definitely a foul, but it wasn't intentional. It wasn't, wasn't anything bigger than that. They're going to look, they went to the monitors to see if it was something bigger than that. I see fans putting a tech sign up. No, sit down. Washington is headed not to the locker room. He stopped short. He's back in that corner getting attention. They're looking to see if that was a flagrant. four-point game. The free throws are coming for Nevada. The question is who's going to shoot them now. It's 
a season high 17 turnovers for San Diego State tonight. Washington's not going to shoot the free throws. They're trying to stop the bleeding. Will Baker is going to shoot him. 68% is Baker on the season. He's been to the line three times tonight. He's two of three. An 18-point lead for San Diego State has melted to four. Pulliam now has four fouls, by the way. Baker hits one of two. Three-point game, two minutes left. Full court pressure still. Pulliam. The double comes, almost stolen. And into the offense with 15 on the shot clock. It's a big possession right here, keeping the batters, getting the stop, but not just getting the stop. Securing the rebound. Bradley isolated against Cambridge. Rises, shoots, and he gets the roll. Wow. Shooter's touch. Bradley with 22. I love it. Matt Bradley just rises over the top. Baker trying to get a three here for Sherfield. Around the screen, double. Baker's got the three. Baker hits the three. The goal. Now it's two. Will Baker stepping up when his name is called. Minute nine left in this ball game. San Diego State was up three at the half, but they came roaring out in the second half. Built an 18-point lead, kept the crowd out of it. Little by little, Nevada worked their way back within 10, and then all of a sudden, it's a two-point game. When shooting 50 or better, they've won 30 straight. They're shooting 54% in this one. Nevada has started to hit shots. They've been in the low 30s, now 40%. San Diego State basketball, and the press has been a problem for the Aztecs. It's caused a lot of turnovers, and it's worked in the favor of Nevada. So keep it going, but do not foul while you're in the press. That's a good move there to split the double by Matt Bradley. Must stay solid right here. Trust your defense, get the stop. I like this right. I like this adjustment. Black share right there on Bradley. You didn't necessarily need the double. And a double team and a good timeout by Brian Dutcher, who was right in front of that play. Ten seconds on the shot clock. 49 seconds left in the second half. I think this is what everyone's going to see in about five or six days down in Las Vegas at the Mountain West Conference Tournament. The, I mean, Nevada is the eighth seed in that tournament. San Diego State's going to be the three seed. And this is back and forth. 18 turnovers, though. That's something certainly that Brian Dutcher will clean up. He, one thing Dutcher has said is you see Craig Neal and, and Steve Alford. A lot of momentum in that huddle right now. San Diego State, again, has played a lot of games. Brian Dutcher told us that He's going to give his team two days off. Tomorrow off, Monday off, practice on Tuesday, a practice on Wednesday, and travel to Las Vegas for that Thursday game on Wednesday afternoon. Nevada, on the other hand, they, they need to win one of these games. They are 0-9 against the top five teams in the Mountain West this year. Oh, wow. They definitely need to win this talking about those off days. I remember me being a player 
Those off days were lovely. <laughs> Especially two days off. That's lovely right there, Rich. Sherfield and Bradley have put on a great show. It's a two-point game. Nevada is out of timeouts. Double bonus for everybody. San Diego State has the arrow. And they've got 10 seconds on the shot clock. Pulliam, baseline out of bounds. Bradley curls off the screen. Quickly he's doubled in the corner. In Good trouble problem. there. And it's a held ball. Arrow stays. San Diego State. So Brian Dutcher and the Aztecs are going to keep possession. That's a smart double off the inbounder. Because he was not expecting that. He was looking to get the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. That was a smart double right there. Because the double came and the held ball, the shot clock is not reset. Ball's tipped. And it's loose. Rolls out to half court. Shot clock's at one. And a heave won't go. Nevada gets the stop with 38 seconds left. That's the stop you needed right there. You get it. Now you must value this offensive possession. Great awareness by Cambridge right there. Tip the ball. Good defense from the Wolfpack. And that rule, since it's a defensive stop into a held ball, no reset on the shot clock. Certainly worked to Nevada's favor there. Sherfield now. Oh, for the three? Cambridge, uh-uh. Bradley has the rebound. Yeah, that's not a good shot. That's not the shot you want right there. And a reaching foul with 26 seconds left. That's just not the shot you want right there. That's a quick shot in the shot clock. That's not what you want. 24 seconds left on the clock. Get a good one. That's not the best shot you can get. Was it a bad shot? No. Was it the shot you wanted this, this crucial time of the game? No. Baker's about to check back in for Washington, who of course came back after getting popped in the nose. Bradley goes to the line, where he's nine of 10 tonight, and shoots two. And makes his first. Baker in, he's a three-point shooting threat for this offensive possession. Washington out. One more for Bradley. Got it. Two big free throws, four-point lead, 26 seconds left. You don't necessarily need a three right here. Just go quick, whatever you do. Sherfield goes quick, Blackshear rises, shoots the three, air balls it, held ball. This time the arrow goes to Nevada. 17 seconds left. Good tie up right there from Cambridge. Fighting for the ball. Let's see what kind of shot they get here. Cambridge falling oh. away. Hits a three from the corner. Oh, that's such a tough shot right there. Coming off the ball screen, I'm mean, off the yep. down screen. Such a tough shot. It's thrown oh. away. And Nevada has it. Nine seconds left. Uh-oh. Brian Dutcher wants a timeout. The press strikes again for Nevada. The defense of the Wolfpack. And this right here is just a tough shot off the pin down. Devin Cambridge, Desmond Cambridge getting his feet set. Fading away, that's just a tough shot right there. Give Cambridge a lot of credit. He did not have a sh good shooting night, but he's hit some couple big shots here. Some big shots in the clutch. Senior night, that's the name of the game. It does not matter what you do in the first half for the first 30 minutes. All matters what you do at press time. All right, nine seconds left. It's a one-point deficit. If you're Nevada, where do you go? We have multiple options right here. But I'm going with Sherfield. Cambridge has hit some cut shots, but he's also missed a few bad ones. I'm going with Sherfield. I'm getting Sherfield and Will Baker in the pick and roll situation. Letting Sherfield attack. And if the big does not help, I'm picking back, get, get it back to Will Baker for the pick and pop. And I might have to stand so I can see. Nevada does not have a timeout. Sherfield's in the backcourt. 
course, Blackshear, Cambridge, and it's Sherfield. Down by one, Sherfield driving in the lane, blocked by Mensa. Out of bounds with 1.8 left. 1.8 to go. Enough time for a catch and shoot or a tip in. Maybe one bounce, but it has to be quick. This is a tough place to inbound from. Foster. Sherfield blocked again. Johnson, 0.2 seconds left. Two block shots by San Diego State. And this now, with that much time on the clock, this is only a deflection. Only, you only have time for a tip in right here. Foster out Washington, and obviously Baker and Washington will be streaking to the bucket. Both coaches screaming from in front of their benches. I think, certainly if you're Nevada, you want the officials to look just to see if there's a point or two that you can put back on the clock to allow for at least a catch and shoot. Yeah, if you're San Diego State and there's point two on the clock, put everybody in the rim, put everybody in the paint, because the only thing you can have is a tip in. You cannot have a catch and shoot, not enough time. So the only thing you can have is a tip in, and even then the tip in can honestly be tough. It's going to be a close one right there. That's a great job of blocking the shot, contesting the three, and not fouling. Yeah, we talk about Johnson, the defensive end, and what he brings, and saw right there, switching, getting out to the guard. Right now, depending on the time on the clock, we're point two, you're point two, no, allow no tip-ins. The battle only you can do is a tip-in, but that all depends on how much time they put back on this clock. If it stays at point two, it's only a deflection which means, and San Diego State certainly has a, a squadron of rim protectors they can roll out there. All right, let's watch the clock and see. It starts, Johnson's block. It's not done until the ball lands in the hands there. That's right, they leave it at point two. And they're gonna leave it at point two. So this is deflection city here. Sherfield will throw it in. You got Blackshear and Cambridge, who can both get up. And you got Washington and Baker in the game at the same time. Sherfield looking. Lob, Washington. No, it's off the back, off the backboard. And it's over. And San Diego State holds on in the last game of the regular season in the Mountain West. An 18-point lead became a thriller. And the defense does it. King McClure, two block shots. Nathan Mensa and Keisha Johnson down the stretch keeps Nevada away from a win on senior night here in Reno. San Diego State just made it so tough. You saw tonight why they are the best defense in the country. What they were able to do to this Nevada team. Grant Sherfield got off, but they eliminated everybody else. This Aztec team can be very dangerous in March with the way they defend. Next stop for both of these teams, Las Vegas. San Diego State will get there having won 9 of 10. Nevada will get there with weapons. And a, certainly the, the earmark of a dangerous team. Here are the brackets. Boise State is the one seed. Wyoming UNLV play the 4-5 game. San Diego State gets the winner of Fresno State, San Jose State. Colorado State, who barely beat Boise State in Fort Collins. We'll get the winner of Utah State and Air Force. So if Nevada can get by New Mexico, then they'll get Boise State. One game at a time. This was a fun one. It looked like a blowout. Give credit to Nevada, who came all the way back but lost by one. For King McClure, our entire CBS crew, I'm Rich Waltz. This is a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Back to Brent and the gang in New York inside college basketball.